This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Behind the Headlines is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Mayor A.C. Wharton on city finances, economic development, and more tonight on Behind the Headlines. I'm Eric Barnes, publisher of the Memphis Daily News. Thanks for joining us. We are joined tonight by Mayor A.C. Wharton, the city of Memphis. Thank you for coming back. Thanks for having us. Also here from your staff are Chief Administrative Officer George Little. Thank you Thanks, for being sir. here. And Brian Collins, Director of Finance for the city. Thanks. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. And also Bill Dries, Senior Reporter with the Memphis Daily News. Um, Mayor, we'll start with a report that came out from the State Comptroller's Office uh, recently. Was released, came I think to your office in April, released publicly right. in the last week or so, raising some real concerns about some debt and the long-term finances of, of the city, um, raising concerns about pilots and over-reliance on tax incentives and, and, and so on, a, a declining tax base, real concerns about the financial situation of the city. Are the city's finances in trouble? They're challenged, uh, as are many cities. Uh, they are genuine concerns, and this is why we uh, immediately uh, got on them and did what, uh, in terms of the technical corrections, uh, uh, we've filed our report on that, uh, and we'll be going forward in this budget season and the five-year plan to deal with the real drivers uh, of, of the uh, gaps that we're facing, namely uh, debt charges, uh, pension benefits, unfunded liabilities, they call OPEA, post-employment benefit liabilities. They are genuine concerns, exacerbated, of course, by the drop uh, in the appraised value of the property. We took a $30 million uh, hit uh, as a result of the reappraisal. So they are genuine concerns, and this is why we're dealing with them uh, head on. And the, the, the big concern about the debt, and, and some, without getting too technical, although maybe we want to get into some of the technicalities of it, the, the refinancing, essentially, of debt and, and like apparently making only some interest payments and not really getting at the principal, um, what are those debts for? I mean, just in, in a kind of ballpark way, what, what is the city been spending money on running the, these debts up on? What, what, are, what, are we, what is that responsible? Go back well, to Well, what happened uh, after the council... Uh, cut uh, the school portion of the, of the uh, sales tax out. Mm -hmm. uh, that left a hole there once uh, the Supreme Court said, hey, you got to pay that, uh, well, six to four million uh, the first year. That's six to four million dollars. Uh, I had requested a tax increase to restore that portion that had been cut out. Mm -hmm. uh, that was denied. We had the school obligation there. The Supreme Court uh, had ruled. Uh, so we were, in effect, refinancing debt uh, and taking the, the returns on that to meet uh, the uh, operating expenses of the city, in addition to cutting. That was not the only solution. We were cutting the budget, but we did not have that portion of the tax rate that had previously been set aside for the schools because the council took that out. So shortly after I took office, I went in and said, the Supreme Court's ruling against us on this. Let's go ahead and, and, and raise the taxes or reinstate that portion that you took out. The council decided it was not a good time to reinstate that. So that's when we went to these measures, uh, which the uh, control has, say, has said, look, that was not uh, well advised. Uh, it, it's cost you a lot of money. You got to get on it. So that's what it was spent for, just to make up for the loss uh, of the portion of the tax that had been removed. Okay. Uh, Bill. We're taping this show on a Wednesday. Tomorrow on Thursday, I believe, is the City Council Budget Committee's wrap-up session uh, before they begin votes as a full body on the tax rate and on the budget. Um, at, is your budget going to be different that you present to the council tomorrow as a result of this report? Uh, the rate, uh, if you'll recall, Bill, as presented, was 339. That was before we had received the certified rate from the mm -hmm. assessor and had that approved by the state. We now have that rate, which is $3.36 but it will still be a revenue neutral budget. Basically, it will keep us flat. Uh, we'll be able to keep the same level of employees, uh, begin restoring the uh, 4.6, but it will not uh, bring any new money in terms of net uh, to the city. It will be revenue neutral. 
In, in terms of, of projects that the administration has been pursuing, that the city has been pursuing, uh, are some of those off of the table now as a result of the council moving around? I think it was $54 million that I counted in this, about six resolutions last week, including $11 million from reserves. Well, uh, Bill, as you know, it's, uh, it, it's not really over until it's over. And, of course, uh, the budget is usually really uh, uh, finalized uh, once we get down to council. Uh, some of those uh, projects have been removed, uh, but uh, there's a good chance many of them will be uh, restored once the, the budget reaches the full council, um, most of the major projects. And, and we talk about projects, and sometimes people, critics of the city of, of government spending, generally the city of Memphis specifically, you know, they'll point to things like, you know, how can the city be spending so much money on FedEx Forum or funding, say, Overton Square or, you know, um, all those kinds of projects that we are living beyond our means. I mean, do you look back, I guess you've been in office, what, three, four years now? Three years. Do you look back at some of these big projects and say, maybe we have spent beyond our means? We shouldn't have done such big ticket, high profile projects? No, I, I do not. And let me, let me tell you why. It is a, it is a tough balancing uh, game. Uh, you want to pursue austerity where you can, but you can't just close down uh, growth opportunities in the city. We live and die by the property tax. If we don't invest in the infrastructure and the real estate of this city, where else do we grow? Uh, it is a balancing uh, act. I have not seen one yet that I have uh, uh, that I have regretted. These are all decisions that we pursue after extreme diligence. Uh, we get studies after studies, whether it's uh, Mitsubishi or whether it's Electrolux or whether it's Overton Square. We'll be able to tell you what the experts uh, predict in terms of a return on each dollar spent. Uh, Overton Square, for example, if you look at the damage that was being caused by the flooding to the real estate in that uh, area, uh, by the time we get the retention uh, facility in there, uh, that's going to stabilize residential property values there, not to mention uh, the uh, commerce that will come into Overton Square. Uh, is there a magic device in which we can flip it around? It will tell us good project, bad project. We don't have such a gadget. We have to talk to the experts, use our best uh, judgment. But again, we've got to grow the value. We've got to have a growth strategy. We cannot go on just a austerity or cut strategy alone. It has to be balanced. We bring you in, uh, Brian Collins, the Director of Finance. You've been in the job six, seven months, yeah. uh, come from a private sector, sector background, and the mayor mentioned return on investment in terms of these projects. From your perspective, relatively new to the job, I mean, are the city's finances in good shape? I mean, obviously there's problems, but are they problems that are solvable? Oh, definitely solvable. And one, one thing I'll add to what you were just talking about as far as the total debt goes, the, the, the problems we're having now aren't so much associated with the total debt that we have in all of these projects that the mayor has talked about. We have a somewhat artificial crisis around debt more associated with the restructuring that we did a few years ago to lower our debt service costs during those years and, and move that debt service cost today. That's a separate issue from the overall debt and all of the investments that we've been making over the years. What, what is the, over, give or take, the overall debt of the city of Memphis? I mean, I know we had the, some folks from the county mm -hmm. commission on last week and they talked sure. about, a, about a billion four that the county holds. What is the total debt amount for the city? About 1.2 billion. And most of that is what? Oh, it's, uh, you know, accumulated projects over the last 20 years, okay. everything from major street projects to uh, building buildings. It's, it's an uh, amalgamation of many, many years. But is your point, back to what the mayor was saying, that this short-term problem is more about a lack of operating expenses versus capital projects? Is that part of what you're saying, that, that, that as the ta problems with the tax rates, funding the schools, it's more of an operating issue versus a capital projects, capital spending point of view? Well, it's, it's, it's a little of both. Okay. We, we have to pay for our debt service out of our current taxes. And, and, and as our tax, uh, rather as the, the money that we have to devote towards 
debt reduction goes up, it pushes a pinch on our operating okay. uh, budget. So debt service is going to be up for several years, and that's pinching the operating okay. side. George Little, get well, you in here. I think I would add to that, though, that we have, to Brian's point, created this situation in part because we've reduced our revenues over the last three years. The mayor's come in with balanced budgets that were adequately funded from a revenue standpoint in terms of taxes. We've made cuts on the expenditure side in uh, everything but police, if you look at the expenditures, uh, and yet the tax rate has gone down even in excess over that, and we've continued to pay for the schools. So with the refinancing to make up the difference for the school funding and for the added public safety funding, we find ourselves in the current situation that the comptroller has, has uh, cited us. Let me, let me get, since you brought up public safety and, and staffing, right now you're in conversations with the unions. There was a there was a 4.6 percent cut, I think, across the board cut to staff um, all aspects of city government um, in the middle of the recession. There's talk now of bringing back at least 2.3 percent of that. Where do the talk stand in terms of um, restoring that 4.6 percent, or is that really off the table now with this new uh, picture of city finances? Well, you've, you've touched on something there. Uh, again, the mayor's budget included the uh, 2.3. Uh, percent restoration, and that's still in the budget at the uh, equalized tax rate. We do intend to comply with the most recent council resolution. They requested that we present options around a lower tax rate, 311, which happens to be the same dollar amount, if you will, lower revenue, though, than uh, what would be the equalized rate. Uh, the council has approved through the impasse hearing process not only restoration of the 4.6, the full 4.6, but a host of other uh, union requests. Uh, it's going to be tough to reconcile uh, that, uh, and I think that'll be one of the challenges. Uh, there are a number of other long-term issues which this administration is seeking to address through a five-year strategic management plan. Uh, I believe our intent was to bring many of those recommendations forward in fiscal year 15, but uh, in light of everything that's on the table right now, perhaps this is an appropriate time to have discussions about that as well particularly in light of the expressed desire to go down to this lower tax rate. Yeah, and go ahead. I will say uh, to uh, Director Little's uh, point, we will be expediting some of the recommendations that uh, we had intended to uh, uh, bring in in FY15, uh, uh, particularly with respect to benefits. We have no, we have no choice. I won't get into the specifics here revenue uh, enhancement collection. Uh, we've got to step that up. Uh, just anecdotally, uh, we hired one attorney to do collection work, and over the course of, what, uh, five or six months, he collected almost a quarter of a million dollars that had uh, been out there just uh, uh, dormant. So there are a number of things you will hear very shortly uh, on the revenue side that perhaps would have uh, been uh, activated later. But because of the situation, uh, we're going to move more quickly on many well, of the I'm recommendations. Gonna, uh, press you a little on the the benefit side. I mean, that's uh, critics of city government, and this is this is a national debate about pensions and long-term benefits versus in the private sector, where more and more people are going to 401k plans that are you know more subject to the whims of the market. Is that the direction you're going in? Is is away from these defined pensions and more to 401k type? of benefits? Uh, that will be recommended, and I don't know how soon uh, that will be. Okay. We have requested our actuarial consultants to uh, give us uh, the city within 60 to 90 days, not a study uh, of whether we ought to look at uh, a defined uh, contribution plan as opposed to a defined benefit, but give us the options on how you do that. And we'll be working with a number of folks uh, to uh, uh, pursue that uh, okay. actively within the upcoming uh, fiscal year. Uh, y you have the choice um, uh, on the benefit side, or do you actually send people out the door? Uh, the less you pay in benefits, uh, of course, you see our usual position, as we call it, a fully loaded position is around $50,000. Now that's ranging all the way from the lowest up to the highest. If you averaged it out. Right. Uh, so to the degree that we can um, bring the benefit package more in line with the private sector based on what we can afford, the fewer folks will have to uh, go out the door. So it'll be a balanced package.
Um, Bill. Is there, is privatization, further privatization, particularly of sanitation services, on the table? Uh, Chief Little has been actively working with uh, 1733 on that. I, he's in a better position to uh, address that. I think, Bill, in response to your question, there are two options that seem to be really in play now. One would be full privatization. That has with it uh, significant risks, uh, we believe. Um, we've been in some, I think, very fruitful discussions with the uh, Sanitation Workers Union for a more cooperative approach that would still yield savings, albeit modest savings, uh, and would allow uh, for an opportunity to provide for some retirement um, while they still have their Social Security. Uh, it's going to come down to a fundamental question of policy and, and, and values. Uh, it will not impact directly upon some of the challenges that we face with the general fund because solid waste is paid out of a separate pool of funds, and council will have to make the ultimate decision on that. Okay. I, I want to... I want to go back to, to the uh, debt restructuring here. Uh, uh, the, the second restructuring that was coming up was what, what I believe kind of caught the controller's eye in, in, in Nashville. Does the council still have to make a decision on that, or is that second restructuring that was this year, is that going ahead? Oh, no, no. We'll go back to the council on that. We made that clear. What we did at the last council meeting was to simply file uh, the documents that the Comptroller had said you need uh, in order to be technically in compliance with state law. We did not present the actual refinancing package. Uh, that will be done at a, at a later date. Is there a possibility, and maybe this is a question for you, Brian Collins, but, you know, again, we talked about the County Commission being here last week talking about their <clears throat> debt situation, and they were, I don't know to use the word gloating, mm -hmm. about how they've refinanced a whole lot of their debt into really low interest situation because interest rates are so low because of all actions by the federal government. So is Memphis missing out on that opportunity to refinance into really low interest rates for the long haul because of these problems? Yeah, part of the problem we face is, is that the, uh, the restructuring that was done a couple of years back has put in, us in a position where a lot of that debt is, is, is not callable now, so we're, uh, we're not in, in, in terrible shape. We're, the, the restructuring that's on the table is going to benefit us in terms of interest rates, but we didn't have as free a hand as they've had recently to, to refinance and to uh, uh, cash in on those lower interest rates. It is, is that... <clears throat> I mean, it, it, the interest payments or, or, or the payments that increase starting with $10 million for the fiscal year coming up, mm -hmm. that seemed to pack quite a wallet, though. I mean, uh, uh, is, that, is that what we, what we get if we do this down the road just, just in a later fiscal year? Yeah, the, 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 the increase that we're getting this year is really not an increase in interest rates, but okay. really just an increase that is a, comes out of that restructuring. Payments were lower for three years, and now they're, they're, they're scaling back up. Um, and they will stay up and continue to go up for about eight or nine more years. We, we talked before, and we'll come back to the issue of staffing, and, and you'd said something about, you know, putting people out the door and letting city workers go. I'm sure there are some number of people listening to the show saying, well, that's what we need. We need, you know, city government is bloated, there are too many people, and so on. We've also had people on the show who've talked before about and city council members who've wanted to do cuts. The biggest portion of staff is really police, and fire, fire, safety. Right. And even, I don't know, in the last six months or so, there was a big conversation about the city, the police department, not spending as much money as was budgeted on Operation Blue Crush and real criticism mm -hmm. from the city saying, look, you know, crime had ticked up a bit. Mm -hmm. Blue Crush was not being implemented. Well, maybe, I don't know if this is a question for you, George. Little, how do you reconcile that? I mean, on the one hand, you've got people saying, hey, spend more money on, on public safety. That's obviously a huge concern in terms of getting people back into Memphis, property values, and so on, and yet you're also up against this budget crunch. Well, I think the myth is that crime is, is, is up. In okay. fact, if you look at the police department's data, uh, crime generally has gone down. Now, there are certain classes of offenses that have stayed up. Uh, I think Director Armstrong had positive results from restructuring uh, his distribution of staff to more effectively use them, changing some of the precincts and, and wards out. Uh, that said, uh, there's been a steady decline in the number of total positions and expenditures in all the other divisions, including fire, which has reduced their complement by 114 in keeping with outside consultant recommendations and their own internal work. Uh, that leaves police, and in this year's budget, uh, under the direction of uh, Director Collins, 
even with police's budget, the line has been held. Uh, the budget that the mayor submitted includes significant restrictions on new hires. Now, that said, uh, if we're to make further reductions, clearly the single biggest portion of the city's budget is in public safety, and of that, the lion's share is in police. And so it comes down to some basic policy questions. Seventy-eight percent of our full-time employees, full-time equivalents, they call them, uh, police and fire. Out of our personal expenditures, 81% police and fire. I mention that because I don't want to give anybody the impression that by nibbling around the edges, getting a few grass cutters out of the parts division, uh, just nibbling at it, that we're going to be able to make the big changes that we're going to have to make. We're going to have to re-examine uh, fire and police. There are going to have to be some changes in the way that we do things. For example, and this is a good time to clear this up, you heard a lot of talk about false alarm calls and how many that the police are entering. I've forgotten how many, 40,000, I've forgotten how many it is. It's an atrociously large number. Does that mean that going forward, MPD will just not respond to burglar alarm calls? Uh, no, there are any number of ways we could shift that, those officers to other more pressing uh, calls. We could say if you have an alarm company in Memphis, Tennessee, then you have to have real human beings to in the first instance respond and then verify uh, that uh, this is a, a real alarm before MPD comes in. There are any number of ways uh, that we can rein in those uh, costs. Uh, so we don't want to give anybody the impression yeah. that we're going out of the burglar alarm business. We've got to transfer responsibility to the other sectors. We, we've talked, and you started the show talking about, you know, how we're property tax dependent and, and you know, we've had, uh, Memphis has had stagnant population and, and people have talked about what does it take to, to grow the population and we've talked about tax rates and getting, you know, there's a, been a real effort on the part of the city council to bring the tax rates down, but that's also caused problems. And then there's fire and safety. I mean, certainly safety and crime is an issue and over the, as you pointed out, um, over the course of time, crime has come down and it's cost a lot of money. I mean, that's a big part of the budget. But the part that people talk about is education, that that's part of what has driven people out of the city and without improving education. Um, you're not going to get the population to grow. There's been talk about, you know, doing funding pre-K. Um, obviously, the city's out of the school system business because of all the consolidation and all that. But there was talk, I think Shay Flynn and others put forward a proposal, a, a small uh, sales tax increase, put a bunch of money towards a pre-K. Is that off the table in this new world of, of difficult finances? Uh, no, it is not off the table. It is still under active uh, consideration. Um, I do uh, support that. I do believe that in the long haul, uh, the better prepared our children are once they reach K through 12, uh, the better off this city as a whole is going to be. More folks, uh, more of our young folks will finish uh, uh, not only uh, 12, uh, but they'll get into college, become much more productive. Uh, children who are, and the studies show this, who are succeeding in school, um, uh, little girls don't get pregnant at 12 and 13. The little boys don't start sticking needles in their arms or stuff up their noses because they're getting a steam from uh, academic success. I'm, I am convinced that in the long haul it will be a, one of the best investments we could make. Uh, Staying on education for a second, although the city is not directly funding schools anymore as a part of consolidation and all the changes, there's still an open question of whether there's some, uh, it depends on who you talk to, 50, 60 million that the school system feel they're owed by the city of Memphis. City of Memphis, some folks say, we're owed money from, from past, where, do the, where does that conversation stand and will the city be making any payments to the school system? Um, by the way, it, it, it is the subject of very productive and active conversations as we speak. We had a great meeting uh, with uh, Superintendent Hobson, um, Chairman Orgel, uh, everybody involved. Uh, just a few days ago, uh, left the table with some great suggestions on the table. I'm optimistic uh, we'll get that resolved in a way 
that is satisfactory to, to all concerned. That, that is a priority. Just a couple minutes left, Bill. Does the solution involve the city putting any amount of money on the table? Uh, yes. Uh, it does. <laughs> and, and a lot of How it, much? It, <laughs> we won't get that. But a lot of it involves, do we continue? Right now, I have in the budget $1.4 uh, million for officers in the schools. Uh, there are any number of ways that we think we can cobble together a settlement that will be in the best interest of the city and, and most important, the school children. All right. My, my final point, when you were county mayor, you established a pay-as-you-go fund that right. is uh, very much part of the success story that county commissioners and the current county mayor have talked about in county finances. Mm -hmm. Is a pay-as-you-go fund possible for city government the way it currently uh, operates? It is, and the way I did it over the county side, you don't do it in one fell swoop. Two million dollars this year, three, four, you know it, you've got 15 million dollars, you can build a building uh, with that. Uh, that's something we're going to have to look to. Uh, some may say it doesn't make sense, but any million dollars you do not have to borrow means uh, $80,000 less per year uh, in debt charges. And, and as a matter of fact, $12 million from that pay-as-you-go fund is being used in the county's CIP budget for the fiscal year that begins July 1st. Right. Uh, uh, we, we're in, once we get out of this mode of putting out uh, the existing fires, we'll be able to prevent fires as we go ahead. I'm looking forward to that. All right. Well, we're out of time. Thank you for being here, uh, Mayor Wharton, Director Collins, Chief Administrative Officer Little, Bill Breeze. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Join us again next week. Good night.